All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Josefa Hamid. I am a senior analyst with Daily Forex, and welcome to today's webinar about crypto trading. So before we continue, just a, a risk disclaimer, uh, very standard stuff. Uh, essentially, it's saying that uh, there is a risk of loss in trading and none of the information that you're going to receive in the next 30 minutes is our investment uh, tips, but for educational purposes only. Okay, with that, we'll begin. As I mentioned, my name is Josefa Hamid. I'm one of the senior analysts with dailyforex.com. I am a Forex and futures trader, primarily a Forex trader. I trade the majors, uh, so Euro USD, GBP USD, uh, dollar Swiss, um, USD yen, etc. And I trade a couple of futures contracts. I've traded crude oil, I trade the SE mini SP 500. There's lots of great activity right now in the equity markets. Um, and one or two other uh, futures contracts, and if I see something developing on the chart, but mainly I'm a Forex trader. I think the most important thing I can tell you about me is that I uh, am a technical analyst, or I use technical an analysis for my decision-making process. Now, I appreciate that means different things to different people. Uh, so for me, what it means is that I use the price chart. I don't take economic data uh, and try to interpret it into my decisions. Uh, I happen not to use any indicators. I might throw a 50%, 61.8% Fib level up on the chart on occasions, but I trade mainly support and resistance. You can still use indicators like moving averages, RSI, et cetera, and be part of uh, that, you know, under that umbrella of technical analysis. So that's not outside of technical analysis. I just personally choose not to use indicators. I feel uh, that the price chart should tell you everything you need to know about trend, et cetera. Uh, I'm based in uh, Toronto, Canada. So if you want, uh, if you're signed into the go to meeting room, oh, I do apologize, the Zoom room now. Uh, if you sign into the room, uh, give us a uh, give us a, a hint about where you're from, what city, what country you're in, or what area you're in. I'd love to know uh, if anyone is nearby. Hi, Alan, uh, Brighton, Chris. Uh, Ronald, Ronald, I think you've been on one of our webinars before. I recognize your name. So in the chat window, just uh, uh, I'll give you 30 seconds. Uh, just put in uh, where you're from. Hi, Brighton from South Africa. So 7 p.m. there, I believe. You're in the same time zone as my home country, England. Hey, Chris. It's 8 p.m. Okay. My math is off today. Hey, Chris from Australia. Chris, what, what time is it there where you are at the moment? I'll let him <laughs> wait for you to respond. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you for humoring me there. Okay. So uh, 4 a.m. Well, Chris, well, <laughs> I don't know if you stayed up for this or you've woken up for this, but well done for being uh, online for this. Hey, Ronald from South Africa. Nice to meet you as well. We have a big, uh, Chris, uh, for some reason, uh, Daily Forex is a big following from South Africa. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. Um, five things you must know before uh, trading cryptos. Okay. First things first, the execution methods vary wildly in crypto trading. So when I'm talking about execution methods, I'm not talking about market orders versus buy stop orders, et cetera. I'm talking about just the logistics of trading itself. So, you know, I've been trading Forex for about a decade now, um, and it's become a very standardized product. You know, you have, when I talk about the majors, everyone knows what they mean. Uh, you have leverage is pretty much standardized amongst countries. Countries like Canada, US, UK have strict leverage amounts, uh, lot sizes, et cetera. All of that is, is it, it, it's ubiquitous, it's standard. Now, cryptos are much newer and they have, there is much more variance amongst how you can execute your crypto trades. There's various types of exchanges, various types of products and so on. And each one will have their own pros and cons. And when you start trading crypto, the first question you often have to ask yourself is, okay, how do I want to execute my trades? So we'll go through a summary of the main, way of, main ways of executing uh, crypto trades. 
You can trade the underlying asset, so you can actually buy physical cryptos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. Uh, so one of the largest types of these uh, exchanges to allow you to buy underlying cryptos is something called Coinbase. There's a bunch of others out there, uh, but you can buy the underlying assets. Now, the advantage of that, you actually own the crypto. You own the assets, period. No, no issues there. Uh, so you're not trading through, you know, with Forex, you may not actually take delivery of the currency, uh, but you here you actually own the physical assets if you're buying a share or a stock, actually. Um, the cons with that is you can't readily short if you're trading the underlying asset. So right now, I think Coinbase has started a shorting program for U.S. residents only in a few states, but generally speaking, trading the underlying asset, you can't short, you can only go long. And if you're a technical analysis analyst, particularly, you you do want to be able to take both sides of the market. You know, trends aren't always going to be up in any asset class. Uh, and there's little leverage. That's the other con. There's, you know, and you've seen the price of coins explode into the tens of thousands of dollars. That means just to buy a single coin, you'll need to own that. You know, you'll have to put down the entire 100% of value of that, of that crypto. Now, another way you can trade cryptos is by trading the futures. Uh, CME, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, for example, has uh, crypto futures for Bitcoin. So Bitcoin futures, I think it's Ethereum is the other coin that they have as a futures contract. So what are the advantages of that? Well, you can go long and short with futures contracts. It's fantastic. Uh, you can take both sides of, uh, of a trend. Uh, there's a lot of leverage with futures trades. That's often why uh, few, uh, people choose to trade futures as opposed to uh, trading the outright underlying um, asset. Uh, and there's a centralized exchange. It's a lot safer. You know, the CME, it has tons of regulation around it. Uh, so, you know, the brokers around uh, who, who have access to the CME are properly regulated. Uh, your deposits, for example, are uh, segregated from the operations of the, the broker themselves, etc. So all the regulations that a centralized exchange brings, you will get that when you're trading the, the crypto futures on, a, on an exchange like uh, CME. And of course, with a central exchange, you get centralized pricing as well. You're not going to get variance in pricing between exchanges, uh, sorry, between brokers rather. Um, the cons, obviously, if you want to trade through a futures uh, 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 vehicle, you have to, you'll require a futures broker. Uh, there can be high account minimums as well. Uh, you really don't want to be opening a futures account with under 10K. I think some allow 1500 $2,000, but really 10K is really your starting point, 10,000 US dollars. Um, or you can use a Forex or CFD broker. So many Forex brokers now, uh, for example, invest markets in South Africa, uh, allow for Forex, uh, allow for crypto trading. Uh, you can do long and short trades. Uh, there's plenty of leverage and you have small account sizes. There's not much in the way of cons as well. And Forex brokers can be regulated, of course. That's the key thing. You always want safety of, of your capital. But in the way of cons, there's not much in the way of cons if you're choosing to trade crypto using a Forex broker or a CFD broker. That's how I personally trade. Uh, the few, I haven't taken that many crypto trades to date, but all of the ones I've done, I've done through my uh, regular Forex broker. Okay. Uh, there's a U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission uh, released a cryptocurrency article. It's a few years old now. It was released in 2018, uh, and it just talks about some of the the uh, areas for concern that they see when you're looking at uh, trading uh, cryptos. Worth reading uh, that article, even if you're not based in the U.S. You're going to get it. Everyone on this webinar is going to get a summary of this web of this webinar. So the link will be in the summary. Okay, so step, you know, first thing to think about is how you're going to execute that trade. Step two is you need, if you want to use technical analysis for any asset class, whether it's crypto or something else, that asset class must be liquid. You need liquidity. And the reason for that is that technical analysis, it really relies on crowd psychology uh, for it to work. You know, when support levels form, resistance levels form, for them to be valid, it can't be just a handful of buyers or sellers. You need a decent crowd behind it for those levels uh, to mean something for them to potentially 
hold. Now, uh, how do you measure liquidity? What determines liquidity? First thing would be the market cap uh, or market capitalization. If you're buying a stock or a share, for example, uh, the market cap will be the size of the company. Uh, you know, Apple, for example, is in the hundreds of billions of dollars. Facebook, for the first time in, in its history, bre uh, breached a uh, trillion dollars. I think Apple is over a trillion dollars now. Uh, so market cap. So individual bit individual cryptocurrencies rather have a total market cap what is the total size of that particular coin um, second would be the amount of volume traded you know the more volume traded shows is actively traded it's more liquid so just to give you an idea of how where crypto stand in terms of liquidity uh, you can readily get the data for market cap and volume trade i've used the source that i've used is coinmarketcap.com i've compiled these numbers yesterday for these today's webinar but if you look at bitcoin bitcoin right now is around 650 billion dollars of course it moves around a lot it's a very volatile instrument but to date it's around that 650 billion dollar mark the last 24 hour volume was over 30 billion dollars of, of bitcoin was traded then you have ethereum big step down but still in the hundreds of billions of dollars in terms of market cap 245 billion dollars and you've got about $25 billion worth of Ethereum that was traded in the last 24 hours. So these are the two leading coins. And then I put everything else as a bunch. You go to step down, you've got Tether at $60 billion, and you can go down the list, Binance coin, Dogecoin, and so on. You can see the market cap getting slowly less, less. Um, and then obviously the amount of volume, therefore, will, 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 get, will get lower and lower. This is not an exhaustive list, uh, but these are the main kind of crypto coins, but really Bitcoin and Ethereum are the two largest. Um, if you see a lot of gaps in the chart, uh, it means that that asset class is not liquid. That's a telltale sign that is not actively trading. Of course, if you're trading anything with a lot of gaps, it's really easy to get gapped out. Either, you know, if you get stopped out, but it closes or, you know, you get filled well below your, or, you know, well outside of your stop loss. Okay, so number three, is know your cost of uh, trading. So what do we mean by the cost of trading? We're talking about things like commissions, but very importantly, the bid offer spread, the bid ask spread. So to give you a comparison of cost of trading of um, crypto, I want to compare it to Forex and I want to compare it to Euro USD. So cost of trading is especially important. Excuse me. It's especially important if you're going to be a short-term trader. So, you know, if you have a high commission level base or you have a, a large spread uh, between bid and ask or uh, bid and offer, uh, and you're doing a lot of short-term trading, you have a lot, you know, you produce maybe half a dozen, a dozen trades or more in a day, uh, those costs will really start to add up. Uh, so know your cost of trading. So I'm going to go walk you through an example, uh, and we're going to look at EURUSD, and you can see how I can calculate the cost of trading. So the first thing I want to look at is, well, what is the range of that uh, asset class, or this, in this case, this currency pair? What is the average daily move? So in Euro USD, I mean, it's, for everything it will vary, but you know, in the last fourteen days or so, sixty pips is pretty common. I'm going to show you where you can find that information. So sometimes when the markets are very volatile, it's 100, 150, 200 pip days. Sometimes you get 20, 30 pip days. But I'm going to use sixty pips as my base, my example. So then I want to look at the spread. So typically on Euro USD, you're going to see spreads at around one pip. Now, this could be, you could have a spread of 0 0.2, 0 0.3 pips, but with a commission of half a pip or 0.7 pips, or you could just have a raw spread without commission at around a pip. You should be able to find a broker with a spread on Euro USD at around a pip. Uh, if you, if you're, if it's a lot higher, it's usually because your account is very small or you just need to move brokers. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now I'm looking at then what is the per spread or that cost of trading as a percentage of that average daily move. So in this case, it's just under 2%, 1.7%. So really the cost of 
trading euro USD uh, is about under 2% of its average daily move. And that's one of the reasons you can effectively day trade euro USD because you're only talking about the spread being under 2% of the average daily move. It doesn't take a lot of movement for you to make up uh, that spread. You know, if you're looking at GBP pound, uh, sorry, GBP yen, for example, that's going to have a few pips in spread. And if you have a lower average daily move, it takes now you're stuck the spread or the cost of trading as a proportion or as a percentage of the move every day is starting to really eat into your cost. It's going to start becoming a bigger chunk of your profits. So we've taken Euro USD. Now let's have a look at, say, Bitcoin as an example. Now, Bitcoin, the average daily move, again, it varies wildly. So I'm using $3,000. So when I last did this webinar last month, the average daily move in the last 14 days or so had been around the $3,000 mark or so. Uh, I've seen as high as five, $6,000 has been low. You know, when the price of Bitcoin, even just a couple of years ago, was a lot lower, it was under, it was under like, a thousand dollars an average daily move but anyway so for this example three thousand dollars let's say you have a cost of trading whether it's spread or commission or a combination of both of 75 dollars uh i looked at an mt4 platform to get that uh, that was the spread they were charging about two and a half percent not bad not as low as euro usd but it's not that far off so something like bitcoin right now in today's environment you could uh, the cost of trading isn't high, and it also means you could short and trade Bitcoin uh, if you want it. Now, on your MT4, MetaTrader 4, uh, if you go to at the top of the menu bar, if you go to insert indicator, there is an indicator called average true range, and you can set that and see what the average daily range is. But make sure if you're looking for the daily range, you, you're looking at that number when you're on the daily time frame. If you're on the hourly chart, it's going to show you the average range for the hour. I don't think that those types of numbers are useful. It's really the daily time frame or the daily range, which is the most useful uh, for trading. If you're looking at the average, uh, what's known as the average true range. Uh, and I tend to, I like to look at the last 10 or 14 days, 10 day, you know, 10 bars on the daily time frame with really the last two weeks. Uh, if assuming that you don't have any weekend trading, if you, if you're looking at an asset class with weekend trading, uh, then you're looking at the last 14 days and that'll give you averaged out. That will give you, a good idea of, of how uh, uh, how much that crypto or that asset class is moving. Okay, so step four is really make sure you know your trends. Where are the trends in the asset class you're trading or the coin you're trading? And what are the key support and resistance levels? You always want to walk into trade knowing those things. You know, you don't want to be just trading off indicators. So the best way to demonstrate this is really just through example. So we're going to do an analysis of a couple of pair, or a couple of cryptos, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay, so Bitcoin. This is the daily chart of Bitcoin. So it's going back to October 2020. Uh, I mean, wow, it's gone from ten thousand dollars to uh, I don't know where it was sixty five thousand dollars. It's high just in this period of a year. So what am I seeing when I look at this chart? So the first thing I can see is that the trend stopped or it, it, it went sideways and it reversed. And I see this kind of rounded top formation uh, where the trend moved, uh, trend went from up to down. Trends don't just typically reverse in isolation of a single bar. They will make a reversal pattern and you should be able to see these on a daily four hour time frame for these kind of big, uh, big trends. But this is a, a textbook reversal pattern. Now the key level, key levels I see on this chart, the resistance at around just over $41,000, $41,325, I mark the key points there. And I see a support level at $28,800. So those are my two key levels if I was trading Bitcoin now. So it's in that range, you know, around the bottom of that range, I'd be bullish. Around the top of that range, uh, I'd be I'd be bearish, but if it moves outside of those range, I want to see how it would settle outside of that range. But one of the things I find interesting, if you look at Bitcoin, is if you look at the range that was formed recently, say in the last couple of months, um, it really ties in with the levels that were produced at the beginning of the year. So those levels, you can, if you mark these levels out on your charts, 
you can predict them in advance. Um, you know, these, I'm finding that Bitcoin and Ethereum, these big coins are, are now trading in very technical ways. I'm drawing support, resistance, chart patterns that you're seeing on the screen, just as similarly as if I was trading Forex. Now, of course, then you, your leverage is going to be different, uh, etc. But in terms of the technical analysis, I'm, I'm trading in exactly the same way as I'm trading anything else, uh, minus the economic calendar, which we're going to talk about. So that's some basic fund, fund no, I say fundamental, I'm not talking about fundamental analysis, but some key technical levels uh, that you should know you should you should know when you're walking into a trade like bitcoin these levels you should have marked marked out or similar levels uh, on your on your chart okay so that was bitcoin let's look at ethereum uh, this is the four hour chart on ethereum so you can see as we're getting into from the left hand side of the chart as we're getting into the chart the chart you know it's been trending up uh and then it starts trending down what i saw back in may was a head and shoulders reversal pattern. So you can see the two shoulders there marked and then the head in the center. And this is the neckline that I drew. So when I saw that and I saw a break, I thought, okay, it's gonna, I didn't know how long it's gonna start me, but I thought, you know, there's gonna be a near term reversal, especially this is on the four hour chart. So I didn't know how long this would go on for. So that's the first thing I saw. And then recently I've seen a support level that's been formed. Seven thousand seventeen hundred dollars of one thousand seven hundred twenty eight dollars roughly. So those are the levels right now that I have marked out on my Ethereum chart. It's starting to look quite bullish in the last week or so. Uh, you know, you've had some. Uh, it looks like it's starting to make a nice, steady uptrend, um, and it bounced pretty cleanly off that support that was made uh, at the end of last month. It, I think it was May twenty fourth ish. You know, meet, went back down to the support level. Hit it, hit it twice now, and it seems to be picked up a lot of you know, the bulls seem to be in control. Okay, so next, no, remember for crypto, there's no economic calendar or fundamentals. Uh, so, you know, with Forex, one of the nice things is that you have economic calendars, which you can find almost anywhere, forexfactory.com, investmarkets.com, and so on. They have these economic calendars you can... Uh, you can plot out when you think, even if you're not a fundamental trader, you can plot out when you think the market is going to get liquidity uh, and what the drivers are. So CPI data, employment numbers, et cetera. You know, if the market is in a tight range and you've got a, a big employment number, a big CPI data being released, or inflation numbers, especially right now, uh, you can you know, bet your bottom dollar that's going to move that pair out of the range, but there's no established economic calendars uh, or fundamental data that drives crypto. It's very sentiment based. Uh, and I'm gonna show you the kinds of things that can drive crypto. Um, so we're gonna go back to our Bitcoin chart. Uh, so if you look at some of the biggest bars on this chart, uh, it was when Tesla announced that they had a holding of Bitcoin. So they announced it at that point, and you can see how that, that announcement moved the market. So we're talking about a private company, Tesla, owned by a private individual, Elon Musk. Their announcement uh, in the last several months was one of the biggest movers of, of Bitcoin in a daily basis. I, I went back on this chart and I couldn't see a bigger bar on the chart at, up until that point. Uh, and then the biggest down bar was when Tesla said they're going to stop accepting Bitcoin. So this is, I find this fascinating that Bitcoin, nobody's quite sure what will move Bitcoin uh, as and when it moves. You know, there'll be other news announcements. Uh, for example, in the UK recently, they've uh, um, stopped accepting or uh, revoked the license from a company called Binance, which is one of the largest Bitcoin exchanges in the world. So those kinds of things are going to be, you know, it's going to be the non-traditional um, announcements that will move uh, crypto pairs and you can't they're, they're not scheduled uh, it's not these kind of central bank and that's really the whole draw really of, of crypto in the first place is not determined by centralized banks uh, uh, and governments it's uh, you know it's a digital uh, uh, democrat 
uh, uh, decentralized platform, democratized. I can't pronounce that word today. Okay, so you get you get the idea, though. All right, so that was the crux of the presentation. So step one, I should have done a summary page. Step one, remember how you exchange uh, your cryptos. Uh, step two, um, know your cost of trading uh, and know your key levels. So here are some resources uh, to help you invest markets. This is a South African uh, broker. So for uh, the guys here and, and from the people here, I should say, in, uh, from your South African based uh, they've got a great description of how crypto started. It's a, it's a good read. Just go to investmarkets.com uh, on the drop down menu under CFD, go to cryptocurrencies, and you'll see this uh, page come up. And you can read about where crypto started and where they are today and how you can trade cryptos as well. Uh, fxacademy.com has a cryptocurrency course. So if you just go to fxacademy.com, go to learn to trade. And then cryptocurrency, or there's a link there, and there'll be in a summary. You go fxacademy.com forward slash learn forward slash crypto um, uh, cryptocurrency. Actually, I'll put the uh, uh, the link up here for everyone. So just put a link up there. That's the FX Academy link, and this next link is for investmarkets.com as well. Uh, and this is what the FX Academy link uh, looks like. Um, learn to trade and just go down to cryptocurrency. Uh, and then you'll, you'll come across the video lessons. So some final thoughts. Uh, the biggest thing I always say at the end of these webinars, mind your risk always. Uh, think about your, uh, always trade with a stop loss. Think about what your return or reward is going to be. And you want your return or reward to be at least the size of the stop loss uh, or greater. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me uh, personally, just go to Huzefa or email me, right? <laughs> so email me rather than just uh, go to this page, Huzefa at dailyforex.com. And you can sign up uh, for the next webinar uh, right here. Uh, I'm going to send you a link. So if you, um, this has been useful for you, uh, thank you very much for joining me. I know a bunch of people came in late after the introduction. Uh, so thank you all very much for joining me. Uh, and have a fabulous rest of your Tuesday. Have a great Wednesday morning, Chris, uh, and um, see you at the next run. Take care.